Hello developers, welcome back to Epify Lab and I'm Sadek back again with another tutorial on e-commerce series and in this video I will be showing you how we can do the request validation separately from our controller. Since this is a little bit bigger project we, we are trying to separate the code as much as possible in their own places so that this can be extendable easily. So here I will be using uh, Postman, for now, Postman for now to test out the APIs and the request validation. So let's say we have a form, a uh, sign up form that I did in my previous video and we might need, uh, we definitely need actually the uh, form validations and this should be done in two ways, in the front end as well and the back end, but the front end is not trustable so we have to do uh, every form request validation in the back end as well. So you can do validation and then synthesization as well both together. Now let's go ahead and see how we will be doing our validation in the Laravel level. So Laravel provides a simplest way to make uh, your validation rules separated and custom messages. So in this case, I will be using Laravel uh, validation class. So PHP partition uh, make request. So we will create a different uh, uh, validation rules for different classes or models. So we can create a user uh, request so for user uh, what kind of user crude or um, update we will be crude actually so we will be using this class so here we go we have created a user request in my project so if I go ahead and see the HTTP folder and then we have a request folder newly created this doesn't come by default with Laravel installations so with this command we can generate a request folder and inside request folder we have uh, uh, this boilerplate code generated by the Laravel for us. So here it, it has authorized so we can check if a user is uh, authorized for making a request to our database. If the user is not authorized we will definitely we will be returning from here and the controller code will not be executed neither neither the rules will be executed at all so it uh, first uh, tries to see, see if you are authorized and if it is true then it goes to the rules and if it is true and everything is perfect here it will go to the um it will go to the controller code so let's see how we can make the controller a little bit nicer so here in our um our controller we don't have any uh, we have a simple controller now we need to make actually the uh let's keep it here we need to make our user controller so let's make user controller now php addition make controller user controller that's all php addition could not open input file what's wrong here user controller okay i'm not sure what was wrong i think the spinning was wrong that's correct Okay, so we have another controller created that's called user controller. Now we will be adding all kind of uh, simple code in the user controller here and we will actually be forwarding all the requests to our services, okay? So that's a little bit overhead, but it's worth it if when you have a little bit bigger project, but that's really overhead if the project is not bigger or mid-level. If it's simplest project with um, not so many routes, then you can go ahead uh, and do everything that your controller full uh, controller file. That's totally fine Okay, so now we have a controller created user controller and now we will be opening our modules uh, Or not models. We will be opening our modules and inside model we have user and web.php Okay, so user API test. So let's create another request um, another uh, route that's called um let's see user api and create okay so we are going to create we're using a post request so let's create and it will go to the user and remember one thing we will be actually uh, trying to make our apis in such a way that we can follow along so here if it is create uh, if it is named as create we will be naming our method as well the create okay so we have to rename the method exactly how it is in the URL, okay? Because we will be easily track down wh where the code is being executed. That's really important when you do a bigger project. It's your totally internal stuff, nothing to do with the project or anything. If you have a different naming convention, follow your own, but it should be easily understandable. Okay, so here we go. 
we need to have a public function create. So now let's say if someone hit a URL, we will be easily understand, okay, this is going to hit the create method. So that's perfect. Now here we have a request. So from there on, we can pass our request to the service or we can execute here. So let's say we say we return from here. Okay, so this is return. Okay, this is validated. Okay, so that means that this request is completely perfect. Now we go in our uh, in the postman and see what we can do. So let's run ecom dot uh, localhost and that it has an example. So we will uh, execute this one and we have the create. So the method is post. Now let's see if we can execute that. Here we go. We have a problem and that problem says, let's see what is the error now. If we have any round actually preview. Okay, so here it says for one page expired. So for one page expired uh, is only generated when you have a CSRF incorrectly done. So since the postman might not have the CSRF token correctly, we will disable the CSRF uh, checks uh, in our current PHP file. So let's go ahead now. Perfect, this is validated and executed really nicely. Now let's keep this uh, in a pretty or uh, yeah, in pretty format. Perfect, right? Now here inside of our user request, let's open this one and keep the um, name type in this one. And we must need to type in with the simple uh, request variable. It can be anything. So we are importing this class. So this class is getting imported from here. Now, since it's um, the authorization is false, it will return a 403 forbidden our, uh, request. So let's see. Here we go. We have 403 request sent back. So that's nice. And here one more thing is that, let's see, it will kill the page directly. Uh, let's check our header, if it if headers is correct in our postman. So the request has to be in XML HTTP request. Okay, I don't think we have it here. Let's see in headers. Uh, XML. Let's see what we have here. X requested with, yeah. X requested with has to be XML. HTTP, I'm not sure. It can be, okay, let's find it from here. I forgot the spelling. So it should be XML HTTP request to make it like an Ajax. Mm. Okay, let's see if we change uh, something here. If it does change or it yeah, does anything, let's go ahead and do some changes. Or we can do it, we can configure or like this. Let me do a real quick set HTML HTTP request. Let's see how, yeah, this is how it is spelled. Just let's copy it. Let me copy it for now. Perfect. So let's run it now. It will be mocking, mocking as a. Uh, uh, um, as XML HTTP request. So here you go. We have this is this action is unauthorized. So we're getting an error and uh, in XML HTTP request. So we we have to handle this error in our exception handler. So it is giving us four zero three uh, forbidden request. So that's really nice because it means that this um, uh, this route cannot be accessed by this user or this request. So we will have to generate some kind of uh, personal error. So that is the message that says this action is unauthorized, 403. Now let's go ahead and make it actually um, to true. Then we will be able to come here. And since we don't have a validation, it should be fine now. So let's execute. This is validated, okay? So that's really correct. Now here, we if let's say we have a name variable that needs to be actually Record so I hope you already know all kind of request validation So you just can go to the level documentation and see what kind of rules you can have So it says name is required now. Let's execute. We don't have we don't we are not passing any kind of uh, 
um, data here at all. So form data is totally none. So it says the name field is required. Okay, so we're getting an error for zero two two four two two unprocessable entity. So that's really working perfect. Give me a second. Sorry, so here um this um validation rules is totally fine, it's working really nice. Now what if why uh, what we want if we want to use, uh, change this um message instead of calling the name field, what should we can call is uh, uh message function actually public function messages. So here we can say that uh our messages is actually an array, so our when the rule is um, the field is name and the rule is required so we can say when a rule is executed uh, for the field of name and is required we can say name is required okay perfect so let's see how it works uh, I ran now given let's see what is the argument uh, maybe we need to execute a return Mm. Okay. Perfect. So we need to return it. Name is required. So the validation is giving our custom error message. That's really nice. Okay. And we can have more error like mean max. Okay. So you can e execute more item here like required dot mean, minimum six character, eight character, or whatever. Okay. So this is really fine. Now we have not we didn't even write any any code here in the validation so if you if we need to use in future in any other places it can be anywhere if we if we need to use anywhere we just need to do this type hint okay and that's all we need to uh, do for the validation and it will be executing all this code here so remember if you are um, not doing any kind of authorization code just do true that will do the work okay so thank you guys for watching this tutorial in the next video i will be showing you uh, we do the validation and everything from the uh, we will be creating the account in our um, in our form actually and then we will try to go ahead and update and uh, do the crude things for the product so once we have the product information and buyer information we will be having the site uh, done correctly so that's nice so in the next video i will be uh, creating login and registration with rate limiting and then maybe i will try to do the redis thing for the Rabbit MQ things so that we can send emails to the user. So stick with me. And we have, uh, I have published a few more videos on uh, real time chat application. So if you are already a Laravel guy, you should be able to feel really at home. So try out Node.js as well. This is really something cool. So thank you guys for watching. Have a nice time.